So, let's take a break for tool reviews and do an easy fix video. If you're not familiar with my channel, every once in a while I'll throw in an easy fix. Something that I, I, I do, that I do projects around the house that some people might be uh, a little leery to attempt themselves. And uh, I just kind of go through my steps of figuring out, uh, to be clear. I have no idea what I'm doing here, but I, but I figure it out, obviously, because you'll see in the future. But, um, yeah, as um, far as uh, DIY projects go, 10 being a... Um, call a professional type video and uh, one being screwing in a light bulb this is about a 1.5 to a 2 so um, not not very difficult at all so uh, I will skip to replacing this for those of you who are watching this just to learn how to replace this because I hate it when I'm looking for an instructional video and uh, somebody uh, makes you skip to the end of the video to get to the meat of it and um, yeah so we'll skip to that we'll um, replace this thing and then I'll come back here maybe crack this thing open and find out why it was freezing up probably won't figure that out but uh yeah so uh let's do that all right starting off we got to get the front of this jacked up so we can get behind it and uh unplug it so we gotta pop that guy off down there all right that comes off like that um it's a good opportunity to clean this thing out while you have it off. Now you just want to screw these guys in and that will engage the rollers into the floor and make it a lot easier to move. get to that and unplug it. Alright, well here's the problem child right here. It uh, looks like we got some quarter inch uh, nuts holding that guy on. And we got another one down here, so. These top ones look like they're slotted, so I'm just going to loosen them. See if I could just kind of slip it off. Doesn't help that I can't fucking see. You guys, you guys probably got a better view than I do. There we go. Right, that fits loose. This one on the bottom. That one's got to come all the way out. There you go. And I think you just pop this up. And just unplug it here. A little secure tab. All right, here we go. All right, so whenever I'm dealing with aftermarket parts like this, whether it's at work or at home, I always kind of like to, you know, sit everybody next to each other, make sure everything's good. This one is chock full of ice, which is part of actually the problem with it, including the frozen bits down here. But, uh, gonna line those up. Yeah, they look pretty good. Turn these two over. I'm going to have to put this on, on the new one, and apparently this needs to go inside here. So let me put this here clip on here and uh, put the new guy in. I'll show you on the other one, on the old one, but I almost forgot to mention that this little groove needs to be cut out for the uh, water spout right here. So then we just got to plug her back in. Somehow. It's like a USB port. Try it the right way, it doesn't fit. Try it the wrong way, and then try it the right way again, and then it fits. Make sure this piece 
still where it needs to be. I'm going to shove that wire back into there. And hang it back on the screws without... There we go. Alright. Almost like you need to know what you're doing. Right, that feels about right. Right, put that lower screw back in. Gotta snug these guys up. It's just sheet metal and plastic, so don't go too crazy with the torque here. Alright, spouts over that. Plugs in there. The little dilly duty is still where it needs to be. And that is off. Alright, well it's in there, so um you gotta plug it back in and push it back against the wall, do everything we did in reverse basically, and uh let it sit for a while, cool down, and then we'll activate it. Now, this one says this is the original OEM one, it says to allow it to uh, cool for 12 hours. But I think that's in reference to if it's going to be a new freezer, you're plugging it in for the first time, it wants to, it wants to let you give it 12 hours for the entire thing to cool down. I'm pretty sure the new one, being that it's already cold in there, will probably be good in a couple of hours. I will. Um, I'm going out to dinner tonight, and I don't want this thing doing whatever it's doing while I'm not looking. So uh, when I get home from dinner tonight, I'll I'll drop this here lever and uh, see if we make ice. And this is the piece that I was saying about in the freezer, in case you couldn't see it too well. There's a little notch in there. You just got to knock that out for my style freezer. Your mileage may vary, but... Uh, yeah, let's uh, give it a few hours and see if we're making ice again. Well, here we go. 24 hours later, we got a big bucket of ice. I tossed the uh, first batch, first couple batches that I put out just in case there was some manufacturing crap uh, stuck in the thing. So, uh, yeah, here we go. So, before we get too deep into this, let's talk about what I bought. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, I got a aftermarket one. Um, visually, I can't see the difference between the aftermarket one and this one, which kind of tells me that it was built in the same factory and they just sell it aftermarket for, for a better price. Now, what came in the package was a secondary plug option. I'm assuming this one just plugs right into the back wall of the freezer instead of the one I have where it actually kind of buries itself into the back wall. And um, this handy dandy instruction sheet. So yeah, it was pretty good. For, for those of you who aren't kind of experienced with finding parts like this, um, best thing to do is to Google your uh, model number of your appliance, we'll say. Uh, get a part sheet, find the part that you need, and then just Google the part number that you come up with and usually you come up with a with a decent aftermarket thing if the aftermarket one gives me any problems and you're watching this video two years from now i will update in the comments that the aftermarket one broke but like i said i can't really see a visual difference between the two so i i doubt it would be any worse than getting the oem one so as as you saw earlier this one before it thawed out uh the the ice was all filled up um the underside here was completely blocked out with ice and it was I believe it was just kind of pop off there we go uh, kind of just letting this mechanism freeze up I kind of thought when I pulled it out I would see some sort of crack in the uh, ice dispensing thing because if you see down here this right here is a heater so while this thing is kind of working like a clock what it does is it starts off Water comes into here, fills up the tray, shuts off the water, freezes over a period of time that this thing, little mechanism over here, determines. And then once it's frozen, it turns this little heater on, slightly melts the ice, and then these little fingers right here 
continue around, scoop it out, and then the cycle continues until the ice cube tray gets full enough to lift this up and then it shuts the mechanism off. As you take ice out of it, this drops down and then onward and onward. So, like I said, I'm not 100% sure why this would overfill like that. I was kind of 50-50 on when I replaced this, uh, whether or not it would the problem was actually this or maybe the solenoid valve which is on the back side of the refrigerator uh, maybe that was sticking and causing this to overflow but for some reason it, it, that's not the case because it's the, the new one's working perfectly fine now so let's crack this open and see maybe we'll find something oh yeah this tool right here give you a better look uh, this right here according to the instruction sheet you turn it one direction you get bigger cubes you turn it the other direction you get smaller cubes. It seems like they put it in the middle and um, whatever it was set from from the factory works out fine for me. So yeah, let's crack this guy open right here. All right, they got an old cheapo screwdriver here. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I have no idea what I'm doing. But sometimes, sometimes you get away with winging it, you know? And again, I'm out 50 bucks if I was wrong, so not too, uh, wasn't too worried about that. And of course, being that the only other thing that could have been a problem would have been that solenoid. This is relatively easy to replace, so I just went with this. Got all the screws out. Let me pull that, pull that plug off. There we go. So we got that plug out. Now I'm thinking this just comes out. Now they do actually just sell this mechanism by itself. Um, for the price of this, you must just get the whole thing. That's my personal opinion. All right, there we go with that. Hey, it looks like you got a little, little stepper motor there. Some stakes to hold the wires in, traces. Not a hundred percent sure what this little screw guy does. Like I said, this is a screw that actually adjusts the amount of water that gets put in. I think it just pull that out. Yeah, it just changes the length of this contact so it opens and closes earlier or later to give you more or less water. Very simple design. No computer chips or anything. So that's kind of cool. That's probably why they're so robust. Did I say robust right? I don't know. And in here we got another set of contacts. Some more screws. Let's take those screws out and see what happens. Still some water in there from when it was leaking. That. That looks like it's just another motor. Is that a motor? No, that is not a motor. That is a some type of thermostat. Yeah, that makes sense. So if this doesn't see that it's cold it doesn't make ice that makes a lot of sense all right so yeah that would be some type of thermostat and that could possibly be the culprit and this thing just comes apart don't it and then you got the heating element that we were talking about earlier and I don't see any obvious cracks in here so possibly the problem might have been in this mechanism here and it was just overfilling it possibly these are all question marks I don't know all right well that's it I mean not much to it to be honest with you it's mostly mechanical which is kind of cool doesn't turn there's other tests you could do on a I think we really need to get into that. Why test something that you could replace? You know what I mean? 
as far as I'm concerned. If you if you if you suspect that it's bad, just replace the damn thing. It's fifty bucks. What, what, are, you, what are you gonna lose? And uh, yeah, like I said, not much to it. Um, very simple and uh, easy to replace. So um, there you go. So there we go. That that would be another easy fix for us today. Um, Normally, uh, as a mechanic, I'm, I'm not a big fan of just throwing parts at something, but like I said, it was a 50-50 shot. This was relatively cheap. I could go through all the, I could Google all the diagnostics to figure out how and what this works for. Uh, none of that is important, considering the price of 50 bucks to replace it. Why, why would you do that? Um, but yeah, like I said... I like the mechanism. It's kind of cool. That's probably why it's been around so long. I think pretty much every Whirlpool uh, ice maker for like the past probably 20 years have used that, that similar one, at least the ones I've seen. I said, I'm not an appliance repair mechanic, but yeah, so that wasn't bad. I'd be considering 50 bucks and 10 minutes of time, not including the time it took me to record this. It's not bad because I just had a appliance guy show up to uh, take a look at my, my washing machine when it was on the spin cycle it sounded like a, a turbine engine with rocks in it and uh it turned out that there's a piece on the back of the drum and it, that cracks and it's like three times the price to replace it than just to replace the washing machine so i ended up having to replace that and uh i i, I asked the guy the appliance repair guy I said what do you recommend and he said he works on lgs and samsungs all day so he said buy a whirlpool or a maytag so that makes sense to me uh, he has no no benefit of <laughs> of lying to me. So uh, yeah, so I replaced it with a whirlpool, and uh, so far it's it's been pretty good. And um, yeah, take that for what it is. But this guy right here in the description, I'll I'll put down the model number of my refrigerator, uh, the part number for for this guy right here, um, and a link to it. The link that I found. Um, has cross references in it, which I like because that kind of gives you more confidence that you're getting the right one. And um, yeah, like I said, just Google model number, get your parts breakdown, find a part, and Google the part number, and you might get lucky and find yourself a inexpensive replacement aftermarket part for it. So um, I think that covers everything, right? Yeah. So. Uh, as always, any questions, you can drop them down the thing. I'll try to answer them. Like I said, I'm not an expert in this stuff. I just, you know, kind of kind of DIY'd and uh, home repaired this. And, um, yeah, so drop them down the thing. I'll put the links in the thing, um, an affiliate link for this. Not that anyone's ever going to buy one, but if you ever do, it helps me out a little teeny tiny bit. And, um, yeah, let's do that. Thanks for watching.